Greetings, salutations, everybody. Welcome to AMC Mailbag, the mailbag-only version of AMC Movie Talk. Now, every day, we take a couple of questions from the mailbag that you can email us anytime at amcmovietalk at gmail.com on our Monday through Friday AMC Movie Talk show. But we get so many questions from you guys, we decided to start AMC Mailbag here on the weekend where all we do is take your questions from the mailbag. My name is John Campy. I'm the uh, editor-in-chief of AMC Movie News, and I am not... In the AMC studios, as you can tell, I am actually uh, with family right now up in Canada and uh, here at the Campy Ranch, and I decided that I wanted to do mailbag anyway because I miss talking movies with you guys. So here we are doing the mailbag show, so let's not waste any time. Let's get to the first question. And our first question today comes to us from Josh Nestor, who writes, Hi, guys. Love the show. I was backtracking a few episodes that I missed, and in one of them, John, you mentioned that you wouldn't mind if they remade Lord of the Rings after Peter Jackson finishes the Hobbit trilogy. If that's the case, then you wouldn't mind Disney remaking Star Wars down the road after episodes 7, 8, and 9 are finished. However, John, if you say no, then you are being hypocritical. And half the reason I'm bringing this up is because to those of us who didn't grow up seeing Star Wars as they came out, Lord of the Rings is that untouchable of a trilogy. Just want to hear your thoughts. Keep up the great work. Well, Josh, thank you for the question. And the question makes sense. I, I want to point out, though, a couple of things here. Now, what does being hypocritical mean? What does being a hypocrite mean? Being a hypocrite means I tell you to do something or, you, or not to do something or whatever, but I give you something you should do in a certain set of circumstances, and then I don't do what I just told you to do in the same set of circumstances. That's what being hypocritical is. But I am going to propose to you that saying, no, don't remake Star Wars, is not the same set of circumstances as saying, yes, go ahead and remake Lord of the Rings. So let's say, for example, let's take a, a marriage situation, okay? Let's say, Josh, you come to me and say, hey, John, should I leave my wife? And I'll say, no, Josh, you should not leave your wife. And then one month later, you find out I leave my wife. And you say, John, you're being hypocritical because you said I shouldn't leave my wife and now you just did. Yes, but our circumstances are different because theoretically, I'm just making this up, by the way, um, you know, the police came to me and said, uh, Mr. Campy, we uncovered a plot by your wife to kill you in your sleep. Our circumstances are different, Josh. Our circumstances are different. So even though I told you not to leave your wife, it is not hypocritical of me to leave my wife because the circumstances were distinctly different and separate. Um, I will suggest to you that the same is true of Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. Now, let me preface all this by saying, you guys well know, that I'm totally cool with remaking films. I don't care if you remake a movie. Uh, I got a certain set of guidelines you should follow. I'll go into those another time. If you're going to remake a movie, make sure you follow certain rules. But really, what does it come down to? A couple of the greatest movies ever made have been remakes. And if you remake a film and it turns out great, then great. We've got another really good movie that we can watch and enjoy. But if the remake turns out to be awful and it sucks, who cares? I've still got the original. I mean, you can remake Top Gun and make it suck. Fine. I still got top, the original Top Gun here that I can watch and enjoy anytime I want. The fact that there's a remake doesn't negatively influence it at all. So I'm fine with that. And so what I said on that show was that I'm totally cool with them remaking Lord of the Rings. Give it some time. Once, you know, The Hobbit's done, and if they don't plan on making any more Lord of the Rings films, if they're done, then give it some time. But yeah, then yeah, I'm, to I'm totally cool with remaking it again, because maybe you can have some even better special effects. Maybe you can have a different kind of take on it. I I'm fine with it. I really am. And if, if it's not good, then I've still got these amazing... Remember, I call Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, the single greatest achievement in filmmaking history. And I explained why in, in yesterday's episode. But to talk about Star Wars, though, I think you're talking about a very different set of circumstances. Now, you mentioned, you know, should they remake Star Wars after Episode 7, 8, and 9? Well, the reason I'm going to absolutely definitely say no is because we know they have plans for more films after Episodes 7, 8, and 9. To remake a movie that has an ongoing continuity would be ridiculous. And I would say the same thing about Lord of the Rings. If, for whatever reason, we found out 
that Peter Jackson and New Line, or maybe even New Line without Peter Jackson, whatever, decided they were going to make more Lord of the Rings sequels, like after Lord of the Rings Return of the King, then I would say it would be ridiculous to remake the original Lord of the Rings if you've already got a Lord of the Rings continuity going. That would make no sense. So I would suggest that if I say, no, don't remake Star Wars, but yes, go ahead and remake Lord of the Rings, it's not hypocritical because they are two different set of circumstances. One is ending its trilogy and ending its continuity. The other has an ongoing continuity. So because those situations are different, but I will say this, and I've said this before, if Star Wars were done, and everybody knows how important Star Wars is to me, the most important set of films in my life, aside from the Abomination prequels, the original Star Wars, Star Wars, Empire, Return of the Jedi, greatest films, my fa favorite films of all time. But if they, if Disney was not doing episodes 7, 8, and 9, or if they did and said, then that's it, we're going to do 7, 8, 9, no more Star Wars films after that, then I would say I'm okay with the idea of remaking it. It'll, it probably won't be as good as the original, but if it can introduce Star Wars to a new generation of people who never went back and watched the originals uh, and maybe give us a really good film, then great. And if it ends up sucking, doesn't matter. I've got 15 versions of the original films at home, and I can watch and enjoy those anytime I want. So different circumstances. So I would say, yes, reboot Lord of the Rings. No, don't reboot Star Wars. But if they were in the same situation, I'd say, yeah, go ahead. Re, uh, remake whatever you want. All right, the next question today comes to us from Andrew G, who writes, Hi, MC. Love listening to you guys. Thanks for keeping me up to speed. I just had a question on 2008's The Incredible Hulk and its relevancy to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. When that movie ended, a couple of big old plot threads were left hanging. The Abomination was still alive, and Tim Blake Nelson had presumably been transformed into the leader. What with the... Uh, uh, casting shift from Edward Norton to Mark Ruffalo, and the so-so performance of the Incredible Hulk at the uh, box office, do you think there's any chance Marvel will examine those dangling threads in Phase 3 or beyond, or should we all just pretend that the Incredible Hulk never actually happened? Thanks. Um, you raise up a, a really good question, Andrew, because it's important to realize that the first Incredible Hulk film, the first Hulk film that Ang Lee directed with Eric Bana as Bruce Banner, that film is not in Marvel continuity. That was a one-shot film, didn't work for them. They decided to re remake it, reboot it. And they rebooted it with an Edward Norton. So the Edward uh, or the Eric Bana Hulk is not in continuity with the Edward Norton Hulk. The, that, that Eric Bana Hulk is gone. It's just they pretend that that one doesn't exist. Now, the Edward Norton Hulk is the same Hulk that we see in Avengers. It's just being played by a different actor, but it's assumed it's the same character. That is in continuity. So that's important to note, and I'm glad you brought that up. So now that raises the question, well, what about Abomination? I'm glad you brought that up, because you know what, me, I think it was me and Dennis, actually, were talking about Abomination a few days ago, um, not on the show, and it's like, Abomination seems like a great fit for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He could play a great role, whether as a redeemed hero, which is one direction you could go. Uh, I mean, you might need somebody with an, like an Abomination on your side if they're going to fight Thanos later on in Phase 3, or maybe even Ultron. I, I mean, I don't know what their plans are. Or, or bring him back as another villain, because, you know, he gave the Hulk all that the Hulk could, could handle. And in The Avengers... Hulk is pretty much the most unstoppable force. And so you've already got a character in the Abomination um, set up as someone who can give the Hulk everything he can handle. And in many ways is stronger and tougher than the Hulk is. He becomes a great character to use, I think, in the future. Now, will they use him? I, I think there's a chance. I do think... Now, I don't think they're going to do anything with the leader. I think they regretted doing that leader thing the moment they release the film, I think they regret it. So I don't think we'll ever see them do anything with the leader, especially the one they set up. But Abomination? I could see them going back and bringing back Abomination. But even if they don't, we don't just pretend that movie didn't exist because that is the same Hulk. It just means there are a couple of characters from that film that they decided not to bring along. That's all. So um, I think they could possibly, I think we could see the return of Abomination, but if they don't, it doesn't mean ignore the other Hulk because it's still the same continuity. That's the way I see it. Okay, the next question comes to us from David Cintron, who writes, Greetings and salutations, AMC super friends. I was hoping you could confirm something I came across a few years ago. 
I heard Will Smith had turned down the role of Neo in The Matrix to work on Wild Wild West. Is this true? And if so, how would the butterfly effect of this decision affect his and Keanu Reeves' careers in a hypothetical alternate, alternate universe? Um, great question, David. And as a matter of fact, yes, what you heard is absolutely true. Will Smith was originally supposed to play Neo. He was the original guy offered the Neo character um, in The Matrix. And when he turned it down, eventually Keanu Reeves got the role. Wow. How different would the Matrix have been? And I, you know, you got to understand, while I'm, I'm not, I don't respect Will Smith a lot for a lot of the decisions he's been making lately, I've always been a defender of Will Smith as an actor. I actually think he's a really quite a good, I thought he was great in Ali, obviously um, Pursuit of Happiness. He's done several films where he's really showed off some great acting chops. So I, I will go on record, I say, I believe that Will Smith is a better actor than Keanu Reeves. Okay. But man, Keanu Reeves made that Neo character. He really, really did. Matrix would have been a very, very different film had Will Smith had done it. And I'm not sure it would be a better film. Even though you had a better actor, you would have had a better actor in the role in Will Smith. I don't necessarily think that means it would have been a better film. Remember, I always talk about sometimes it's not necessarily about getting the absolute best talent. You want to get talent. But sometimes what's even more important is fit. Get talent that is also the best fit. And I, I actually think the Matrix, I mean, we'll never know for sure because we'll never see that Matrix film with Will Smith. But I got to believe, and the way I, what I believe, and I still do today, is that the Matrix that we got with Keanu Reeves in the role was a better film than what it would have been with Will Smith, even though Will Smith is a better actor. I just think the, what Keanu Reeves brought to that character is what that character needed. Like I said, we'll never know for sure, but that's my gut instinct, my gut feeling. What would the butterfly effect have been? I think I don't think we would know who Keanu Reeves is anymore. <laughs> Honestly, um, I, I think a lot of people, even at the time, were like Keanu Reeves is, is, is the sci-fi film starring Keanu Reeves. What? Um, but I think that 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 gave his career a real big boost, and and the reason we still talk about Keanu Reeves today, I think, is because of the Matrix. So I don't think any of us would even know who Keanu Reeves was anymore. If it wasn't for that. And Will Smith's legend would just be even bigger than it is now. Because Wild Wild West sucked. Uh, <laughs> there's no other way to put it. It just, it was terrible. Um, and The Matrix was awesome. So it, it, I mean, wow. It's weird to think. I mean, but you know, same thing. What if Tom Selleck had played Indiana Jones still Harrison Ford? Because a lot of you don't realize. Tom Selleck was lined up and cast and all set to be Indiana Jones. And then he left to go and do Magnum P.I., the TV show instead. So they went and got Harrison Ford to play it and history was rewritten. And we'll never know which one would have been better. All we know is that what we got was great and we're happy with that. And I think the same can be said of, um, of uh, The Matrix. Okay, let's move on to the next question. And the next question, uh, that's the one we already answered, sorry, comes to us from Isaiah. And Isaiah writes... If the Lego movie, for those of you who don't know, there is a Lego movie coming out. Look on YouTube for Lego movie trailer. The trailer is out and I think it's great. Anyway, if the Lego movie becomes a big hit, do you think Warner Brothers will make a Lego Justice League movie since Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Aquaman will all have cameos in the movie? Dude, Isaiah, yes. Yes. You know, I have... I've said on the show before, I have gotten out of the doubting the Lego franchise business. I'm out of that business. I am now in the believe in the Lego franchise business. I thought the trailer for the Lego movie, Christopher Pratt doing the lead voice. Uh, you got Morgan Freeman doing one of the voices. Um, Will Ferrell's the voice of the villain. Uh, Liam Neeson's one of the voices of, of one of the villains as well. I think that movie looks like it's going to be really funny. And I know they've already got plans for another Lego movie. Um, I can't ninja something. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but they got a plans for that. I believe Lego is going to become almost a genre in itself. I believe the Lego movies are within a few years. The Lego movies are going to be a sub genre in and unto themselves. And do I believe Warner Brothers will kick up a Justice League Lego movie? Absolutely, they will. I completely believe that they will. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. I haven't heard anything that they're doing it. I just, if you ask me, do I think they'll do it? Hell yeah, I think they'll do it because I think this franchise is going to be ridiculously popular. I think it's going to make them a lot of money. I, I think it can be made for relatively modest budgets. And then you have 
a world of possibilities. And considering how prominently Batman figures into that Lego trailer, I'd be shocked if we don't see a Harry Potter Lego movie, Batman Lego movie, Star Wars Lego movies, Justice League Lego movies. I Like I said, dude, I think these things are going to become genres in and unto themselves. So yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Keep your eyes open for that. Okay, the next question comes to us from Jordan McKee. And Jordan McKee writes, Hey guys, thank you for being so great. Well, thank you. Uh, every episode and bringing so much enthusiasm to the movie news world. Love you guys. Well, we love you too. Thanks, Jordan. Um, my question is about the Ender's Game trailers that have recently come out. Having read the book, I feel like they show too much of the story in the trailers. In fact, they basically tell the entire story in a mere minute. Would you guys agree, or am I being too critical because my because of my view through the Ender's Game fanboy point of view? Well, Jordan, I, I don't think you're looking at it from an Ender's Game fan, fanboy point of view. I think you're looking at it from a, a person, from the point of view of a person who's read the book. And if you've read the book Ender's Game, then the trailer isn't giving anything away that you don't already know. You already know the whole movie. But for somebody like me, who has not read Ender's Game, the book, I looked at that trailer and I didn't feel like I saw the whole movie at all because I haven't read the book. So I don't know if it showed me the whole movie. To me, it just looked like a, a regular trailer. Um, whereas somebody like you, who you've read the book and you know the story, you know everything that happens... Well, maybe to you it looks like they give the movie away, but that's only to you and it doesn't matter because the movie's already given away anyway because you've read the book. So um, I would say from the point of view of somebody who's not read the book, no, there are trailers that feel like they give away the whole movie. I, I never felt like the Ender's Game trailer and I don't love the Ender Game, Ender's Game trailer, but one thing I will say for it is I, I as a person who has not read the book never felt like I saw the whole movie in the trailer. That's just my thing. So I don't think there's anything wrong with a fanboy point of view. I don't think you're looking at it from a fanboy point of view. I think you're looking at it from the point of view of somebody who's read the book. Nothing wrong with that. Just from somebody who hasn't read the book, didn't have that same experience. All right, last question of the day comes to us from Josh Van Sprang who writes, Hey guys, been watching the show for a while. Keep up the great work. Just watched The Wolverine. Love the movie and was just thinking to myself what a great actor Hugh Jackman is. I know with the new Batman vs. Superman, they'll be looking for a more older slash seasoned Batman. What are your thoughts on the possibility of Jackman filling in for the role? Dude, Josh, I gotta tell you, I have, I've brought up um, Hugh Jackman before. What that dude has physically turned himself into, perfect for Batman. Perfect. He's, he's a world-class actor. He's a great-looking dude. When he's dressed up in the tux and the suave, he's totally Bruce Wayne. And he could totally pull off a great Batman. But much like a Daniel Craig issue that came up yesterday, I don't think it'll ever happen because the, the dude is just Wolverine. He's Wolverine. Now, there is precedence for people playing multiple superhero characters. For instance, our current Captain America, Chris Evans, he was Johnny Storm in Fantastic Four, both Marvel characters, as a matter of fact. But the difference is, and Ryan Reynolds is another one. You know, Ryan Reynolds was Deadpool in one movie. He was um, a Green Lantern, obviously. So there's precedence. But the thing is, Chris Evans never became synonymous with the Human Torch. Ryan Reynolds never became synonymous with Deadpool. Hugh Jackman, at this point, is synonymous with Wolverine. He's been playing the character for, I don't know, 13 years, maybe more. Um, he is Wolverine. And I think it, that really precludes him. I really think that disqualifies him from suddenly becoming another superhero character, especially a DC one, uh, playing Batman. Now... I would jump up and down and be totally thrilled with you. He's perfect. He's the right age. He's got the he's be a great Bruce Wayne and he'd be a great Batman. He's physically a beast. I think he'd be the best. I think he would blow Christian Bale's Batman out of the water. I really do. But I don't think it'll ever happen because like I said, the dude is just at this point, he is completely synonymous with Wolverine and I just think I don't think a studio is going to go that way. And and I I really wouldn't doubt it if at this point there's something in his in his contract with Fox <laughs> preventing him from playing more superhero characters for other studios at this point. I, I'm not saying that there is in his contract. I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised if there was. So anyway, folks, that'll do it for me for today. Thanks so much for joining us. Again, sorry for the fact that this is, you know, lower production value than normal. I'm, I've just got my little gear set up here that I brought with me to Canada. Um, thanks so much for your patience. And, and, and by the way, guys, um, 
Uh, I had put up a video the other day um, explaining that we've had a, a, a tragedy in our family, which is why I came back up to Canada. Um, and I've, I got over a thousand emails from you guys and the outpouring, um, give me a second, <laughs> the outpouring of support um, that you guys sent out to me, uh, I'm really moved by. And um, thank you so much. It, it, it really does mean a lot. Um, and I appreciate it so much. And thanks for your understanding for the fact that I'm not in studio right now or, or on AMC Movie Talk. I'll be back on AMC Movie Talk on Tuesday. Um, I fly back to Los Angeles on Tuesday morning. So I'm going to do AMC Movie Talk Tuesday when I get back. So uh, for Monday, which is tomorrow, you're, you're guys going to have Amy Rose leading the, the way again. I know she's been doing a great job. So thank you again for your support. Make sure you email us at amcmovietalk at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Facebook. And uh, again, thanks so much for your support, guys. So until next time, my name is John Campia. And until then, bye-bye.